All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for coming. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I'm going to talk about support vector machines. And if you went to Kristen Lynn's talk earlier today, she talked about support vector machines a little bit in her, in her usage and of them and in her research. So I thought this is actually a timely talk, so I'm really excited. <laughs> so what are support vector machines? What do they try to solve? So here's a, here are a few examples of just data and crazy looking data. You know, we have got two classes here and we're like, how are we going to separate this data? And so that's the idea of support vector machines. What's the optimal boundary or set of boundaries that would separate these two classes? And support vector machines are supervised learning models and associated algorithms that construct linear nonlinear boundaries called hyperplanes for classification. And they're composed of three classifiers, the maximum margin classifier, the support vector classifier, and the support vector machine classifier. So I'm going to go through those three today. But before I go into that, what is a hyperplane? Like, what do we mean by hyperplane? So in a p-dimensional space, a hyperplane is a flat affine subspace of dimension p minus 1. Um, and by affine, I mean that uh, the subspace doesn't have to go through the origin. So in two dimensions, we've got a uh, one-dimensional subspace or a line, as you can see here. In three dimensions, we've got a plane. And in p greater than three dimensions, it's hard to visualize, though I tried to find something that could look a little crazy. Uh, we still have a hyperplane, a uh, p minus one dimensional flat subspace. And so the idea still applies in that case. But you know, this is just someone's crazy graphic of what it would mean to go beyond three dimensions. So the mathematical description of a hyperplane, uh, it's displayed here. We've got p minus one dimensions for the p predictors if a point x is equal to x1 to, to p, um, transpose beta uh, satisfies this equation here, f of x is equal to x transpo transpose beta plus beta naught equal to zero, then that point x lies exactly on the hyperplane. <laughs> but if we change that equal sign to either greater than equal, greater than zero, or less than zero, that tells us that the x lies on either side of the plane. So that's what that sign of x transpose beta plus beta not equal to zero, or beta not e means it's just like the classification rule is whether or not that f of x is plus positive or negative. And so we can think of a hyperplane as actually dividing a p-dimensional space into two halves. And so that's the idea of a separating hyperplane. And here's just a little bit more detail on what exactly a separating hyperplane is. Um, if, it, if a separating hyperplane exists, because it may or may not, we can use it to create a very natural classifier. Um, test observation is assigned to a class either, and that's what the yi's are, either yi is equal to 1 or negative 1, depending on which side of that hyperplane is, side of the observation, the hyper, side of the hyperplane the observation is on. And so we can classify the test observation um, using uh, this e equation here. It kind of summarizes the greater than zero or smaller than zero uh, classification rule. And so not only do we look at whether or not things are positive or negative, we can also look at the magnitude. Um, if our test observation lies far from the hyperplane, we can be confident about our class assignment for that, observa for that test observation. And if it's um, close to zero, if f of x um, is close to zero, then um, the x, the test observation is actually located near the hyperplane, so we're less certain about the class assignment. So what I'm trying to say is, basically, uh, we're looking at the distance, or what I'll be talking about more is the margin. Um, so, what are support? What are the um, maximum margin hyperplane? What do I mean by that? Um, the maximum margin classifier is one of the earliest support vector machines uses. It's, it finds a hyperplane that, uh, fi that achieves the maximum separation between classes of data points. Um, so on this third line here, uh, it's the same equation as we were talking about before, the separating hyperplane um, right here. But except for the greater than zero dis um, business, we have an M. So the zero part is just a really, really hard rule. Either it's um, on the hyperplane or not. And there's really no distance there, no um, cushion. But for this equation now, we have a little bit more cushion for our distance. And, um, but that's only provided that m is equal to, is positive. Um, 
And so the second we just need that second line of the constraint to talk to talk about the limit of the length of the beta coefficients vector. Um, we just want to be make sure that the perpendicular distance from the ith observation to the hyperplane is this equation that we see here. Um, uh oh, let's see. Oh yeah, this thing. The distance is um, it, these two things help to manage what that um, m is, or, and so. The two constraints ensure that the, each observation is on the correct side of the hyperplane and is at least a distance m from the hyperplane. So the m is our margin. It is what we try to maximize. That is our optimization problem. So we want to choose the best betas, the best coefficients vector that um, maximize our m using these two different constraints. And that's basically what we're doing when we're trying to do a maximum margin um, classifier. So this is a mathematical description, but let's just take a look at some pictures here. We've got um, two different margins here. We've got a larger margin, so our M is bigger. Here we've got a smaller margin. Um, the whole point of having uh, an M, we actually don't have any room for observations within our margin, and we definitely don't have observations that cross the hyperplane. Um, and so that's the hardness factor of our M. Um, it either uh, our observations are, are going to be on either side of that margin. It's just that the cushion that the margin allows is the distance that we can have. Whereas when we were dealing with greater than zero, um, all we would have is just uh, either an opposite. There would be like there's no room. No, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't be able to play around with the distance between the observations. It's just either on the right side or on the wrong side, and that's it. Um, so, yeah. So, but this only happens actually if we actually have a separating hyperplane that exists. Sometimes it doesn't exist. Sometimes we can't find an M at distance greater than zero. Um, these maximum margin classifiers are really sensitive to individual observations. So, observations that are out here or closer to that margin. Um, so we can actually extend the concept of a separating hyperplane to almost classify all these mar uh, observations. And so that's um, completely, so that's the idea of a uh, support vector classifier. It actually uses a soft margin, because here, this is a, lar a hard margin. Nothing can go across this line. Nothing can go across this line from, th from these classes of, um, from this class. And same thing for this class. So does that make sense? I feel like I might not have been clear, but if you have any questions, be feel free to ask.